Tokyo Rain one video because something interesting came up. Um, my mother came back recently from a um, business trip to Tokyo and uh, she brought a few things uh, back for me including the newest egg and I noticed that um, a lot of the models were wearing um, furry hats. So I um, did some search on the internet and I asked a few Japanese friends how um, the winter fashion is handling and what is very popular now is um, furry clothing. Um, and to be honest, if you think about it, fur actually all, always has been uh, very popular popular during the winter because you know it's so warm and stuff like that. But this time it really is implemented in so many um, different clothing pieces like not only hats or um, uh, boots but also skirts um, J uh, jackets, um, blouses, stuff like that. If you can remember like a few winters back um, the model that was very popular was um, the hat with the flaps around the ears and the furry ball on the top of the hat. Um, you still see those but now the ones that you most see is the one with the furry ball on the side. Now besides the good part of the fashion and what is popular now with the gyaru my mother also experienced something a bit weird. Um, she experienced a chikan for the first time. And chikan are sort of the perverted men who sexual harass um, girls or women uh, in overcrowded uh, subway trains. Uh, what happened was my mother got caught in the uh, rush hour once uh, during her stay. And the train was incredibly crowded. And she was standing there and she noticed that a guy was standing very close to her. And uh, you know, you're, you're very crowded so she didn't first think uh, something about it. But um, she then noticed that with every bump he tried to make his way to um, sort of, not really ride up against her, but you know, to touch her and uh, with, with his body. And um, she also noticed that when she took a step away, from him, sooner or later he would be uh, again standing right next to her. And so she noticed. And then what she did is because she still wasn't certain, you know, you don't want to accuse someone if, if it's just um, a coincidence or um, not uh, um, on purpose. So what she did was she stood there and she held down her hand and she pointed her knuckle at the side, at his side. So every time he tried to um, go up against her, he poked into the knuckle of her, which, you know, is of course a very unpleasant feeling, so she could even see uh, him react. Um, the... hi. Um, how irritated he was with the feeling that he got from um, the poking and it was funny because there was uh, an older man sitting right next to uh, next to them uh, on the bench and he saw it happening and after um, the pervert guy um, left the train he grabbed my mother's hand and he said arigato thank you and he was very amused with how my mother uh, reacted to the chikang to the uh, perverted guy and you know how she did not um, 
you know, let him uh, really abuse her. Because that's the thing with um, the sexual harassment in the trains in Japan is that, you know, if it, ha if it happens to a Japanese uh, girl, she is um, most of the time is really embarrassed and she doesn't, you know, she doesn't have the courage to say anything because she is just so embarrassed. Um, it happens with a lot of girls. I don't know if it happens with a lot of foreign women. I have spoken to a few foreign girls who said that it happened to them, um, but not too many because I think that foreign girls will, um, you know, they, they would um, punch something or someone in the mouth if they tried to do that and Japanese girls probably wouldn't. Um, for example, uh, Mika, the girl who appeared in uh, earlier videos of mine, she experienced it once um, when she was in high school. I think that also high school students um, really are a, a target for those older men because you know they're young, they're uh, probably very insecure when something like that happens and it's also the whole young girl fetish with all the old people. Uh, what happened was um, she actually didn't notice that some, something was happening but when she left the train um, there was sperm on her miniskirt. You know, they, uh, they wear um, school uniforms uh, in high school, so there was actually sperm on her um, miniskirt from a older man who was uh, jerking off and ejaculating um, in a cigarette. And, you know, it sounds a bit weird to not notice that, but if you realize that it will be so crowded that you just sit like there and you, you just stare somewhere because there are people everywhere. You stare at the seating or something. Someone can actually take uh, abuse of that and uh, do something like that. The weird thing is, is I talked to a foreign person, I don't remember who, I think um, a Dutch fellow student who told me that she knew a um, Japanese girl um, with, uh, who had that happen to her as well, the sperm on her um, miniskirt thing. So that actually, um, it was really disturbing that that happens a lot. I don't know exactly the number, but I think like 6 out of 10 girls nowadays have experienced that chikan. So it's actually a real big problem. There's even books written about it from the chikan's perspective. So from the pervert's perspective on how to approach um, sexual harassing um, young girls and they're actually very popular or they were very popular I have to say I don't know if they're still popular now um, but for example they have now the ladies only train where only girls are allowed in, in certain um, train cabins and um, for example Mika when she is in rush hour she always uses the lady only trains um, because it only happens when it's very crowded when people cannot really see what's happening around you because of the immense um, uh, ocean of people standing like this. Um, and I think, I, I thought about it because, you know, Gyaru are of course very beautiful, very young young people and I think they are the main target for something to happen like this. But I thought, you know, Gyaru are a little bit more, you know, impulsive, they react a little bit more fierce t towards something like that. But I think that would be mainly only um, when you're in a group. Like, if a Gyaru is on her own, I think that it could even happen to her that she would be sexual harassed um, in the trains. Uh, I, I, I even don't think that it would ever happen if you're in a group because, you know, the group can overmaster one old preferred guy. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of, of a very serious subject, but I think the whole Chikan um, thing in Japan is actually very disturbing. Um, and like I said, uh, a few other girls that I know uh, have happened to that as well. Um, the Japanese girls are called um, Mari and Akiko. You will actually see more of them um, during the videos of my older Japan trips that are coming um, at the end of this year. Um, and, you know, it's something that has to stop, but it probably will not stop because of the, the, the mindset of those chikan, those, those perverted guys, and uh, they will still continue, but at least they have something like the lady trains where something like that cannot happen. And um, yeah, it's a disturbing part of Japanese, of the, of the Japanese, and um, 
it's also a little bit freaky that it now happened with my mother as well. So uh, if you're a firm girl, um, that doesn't mean that it could not happen uh, to you. So if you ever are in a very crowded train, um, please look out. Alright, see ya.